Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week 8 of the GBA D League. Now, um, apologies, this is late. I'm hoping this is up on Tuesday night at least. Um, apologies, it's two days late. Uh, and apologies as well, we're going to be putting the team builder and the uh, battle in one video. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably don't like watching the team builder. I don't tend to watch team builders either, so I'm, I'm with you there. Um, so the battle is coming. Um, I'll try and leave a timestamp if I remember um, in the video or in the description or something somewhere. Um, so you can skip the... Uh, so you can skip the team builder now um, this week we're up against Randy and the Texas Rangers We are out of the running for uh, Playoffs Randy isn't this is an important game. So I couldn't quite go Me mode yet. I had to try I'm not gonna throw a game for anyone uh, if there is some meaning so we're going into this game and quietly confident um, there are a lot of things on Randy's team which dick me uh, and I have things on my team which dick him. Uh, it's purely going to be who can get their kind of win condition going first. Um, this week, I mean, looking at his draft, Tapi Coco, High Dragon, Mega Sizzle, Meloetta, Holucha, Nida King, Muk, Alola, Rapidash, Cloister, Celebi, and Jellicent. Looking at that immediately, um, I saw that Zerkatru is probably my win con this week. Um, and things like Lop, as always, can just clean up late game. So. We'll just get straight into my team here. We're not going to sort of theorise too much about what my opponent could bring or anything like that. We're going to bring our Choice Scarf Zerkatry now. Um, this will... I mean, Thunderbolt two shots like his whole draft, other than Nido King. Once Nido King's gone, he's got no electric immunity. Um, I think he has a resist in High Dragon. I say a resist in Tapu Koko, but every time Tapu Koko comes in, it gives me the electric terrain. I am modest. Um, I don't even need to be timid to outspeed. I think the fastest thing on this draft is Coco. Yeah, so I think modest with almost max investment outspeeds max speed Coco. Um, so I get a modest Thunderbolt off. I can take like any hit Coco wants to throw at me. I can probably two hit KO Coco with Thunderbolt, which is disgusting. And especially if I have Beast Boost going on, then um, I'll be doing massive damage. But uh, I'm running Volt Switch as well for momentum. If I can't kind of get set up yet. I've got Dazzling Gleam mainly for the High Dragon. It was a real toss up between Hidden Power Rise, Dazzling Gleam and Signal Beam. Um, because Signal Beam would hit, uh, what was it? It is the Celebi four times effective. Um, Celebi seemed to be like his best answer outside of Nido King, And I felt like Nido King was definitely coming. Celebi maybe not so much because I do have a lot of things that can deal with a Celebi on my draft outside of Zerkatry. So... Hidden Power Rise for the Nido King also does hit the Celebi if I need it to. Um, it also hits the High Dragon if worst comes to worst. Probably two it KOs it as well because Zerkatru is that, you know, that powerful. Um, but Dazzling Gleam is there as well. I mean, once any of them three checks he has to Electric are gone, four checks to Electric are gone, I can just start, I mean, mainly Nido King, I can just start clicking Thunderbolt and doing damage. So. Zerkatru is probably going to be my win con and will be the one that does a lot of work this week. Uh, second up, we're running Latias. Um, I think Latias was actually one of the last things I put on the team. I just, I, I had to bring it because of Defog, basically. Um, we're running Timid with enough speed to outspeed a High Dragon. Um, some special defense investment to live, I think, hits from Nidoking as best as possible. Um, because obviously Psychic will do a lot of damage, if not kill that thing. And Dragon Pulse will also hit the... Um, the High Dragon. I do struggle against the Mega Sizz. That's to be expected. I don't have the best Mega Sizz or Switch-ins. Originally, I had Koffer Grigus in this team, um, but my front office persuaded me to change it to Clefable, um, and we'll see how that plays out in the game, because it does have an effect. Um, but basically, Latias is only here for default. It was this or Scun Tank, and I felt like this thing could do more this week. Um, next up, we have got the um, Volcarona now. Instead of, <coughs> excuse me, that's Discord. You do not want to be seeing that. Um, pressing the wrong button there. I um, punched myself in the face. This is all going wrong now. Anyway, comedy sketch over. We're going back into Volcarona. Psychic Tailwind, Bug Buzz, Fire Blast. Volcarona does massive work to uh, Randy's team. I don't need the Quiver Dancers. Tailwind will be really, really good for me. Um, he has got Horlucha, which could go Scarfed. He has got... Uh, Tapu Koko, which could go Scarfed. He's got Rapidash, which could go Scarfed. He's got uh, Celebi, which could speed tie me if he really wanted to. Um, a few things that outs can tie or outspeed me at plus one. So, 
we decided to go Tailwind because the plus one special attack isn't too important if I can get some some rocks up um, early on in the game. Z Fire Blast, he has like zero switch-ins other than Jellicent. I think even then that'll still take like half, which is gross. Um, Rapidash, if he brings Flash Fire, is also a switch-in to this thing, but I imagine after Stealth Rocks it won't take a Fire Blast and a Psychic. Um, Bug Buzz, I mean, it kills Celebi, it kills the High Dragon. Um, Scizor switches in, sure, but who switches Scizor in on a Volcarona, especially when I take Bullet Punch super well. Um, Horlucha could be a bit of a problem. Nido King, I mean, Fire Blast would do a huge amount of damage to it. Again, Alolan Muck, um, if it's bulky of Assault Vest, I won't be doing too much to it, but I will be able to do other things. Um, you know, Tailwind, just in general as well, team support wise, would really help me with uh, Crocodile. If Crocodile gets up behind one of those, Tailwind's looking at his team, he really, really struggles against Crocodile. Um, it's just Crocodile's natural speed doesn't quite do it for me this game. We'll go over that in a second. But we are running almost max speed to outspeed the Hydreigon. Um, don't know why it's 244. I'm pretty sure I could have run less, but that's what we've gone for. We've gone for 4HP, obviously, to make it so we live two Stealth Rock switchings from uh, if we're starting from max health. Um, and the rest, obviously, in special attack and a little bit in defenses. But basically, this thing's there to punch walls because he doesn't really have great things. I mean, he has things which can switch into one move, but the things that switch in, like, like for example, Mega Scizor and Bug Buzz, can't then take a Fire Blast, and we're going to be switching. And eventually, I can just click that Fire EMZ uh, and kill something on his team. Jellicent's probably his best answer, but it was a real mix-up between Psychic and um, the, oh, what's it called, the Giga Drain. Um, I could have bought Z Giga Drain or Z Solar Beam even for the Jellicent, um, but we decided to go with the Psychic in the end. Uh, anyway, so um, next up we are going to go into um, the Crocodile, Crikey, with Knock Off, Fire Fang, Earthquake, Superpower. We're going Rosalie Berry because I can live a... Um, Max Special Attack, Taku Ko Tapu Coco, Daz and Gleamer from above half, pretty much guaranteed, unless he's modest, which he could do this game. He'd be quite ballsy because I think Floats on might then outspeed, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a look. Um, but we are running Rosalie Berry, Intimidate, Superpower, Earthquake, Five Bang, Knockoff, like I said. Um, he hits his team really well. Uh, knockoff. Doesn't hit anything of the Meloetta super effective. Oh, and Celebi, of course. Actually, and Jellicent. So, um, knockoff is good utility, and if not, it does hit those things really well. Firefang does hit the Mega Scizor. It won't kill, but I think it'll be like a 2 hit KO, even to a max defense one, um, which is nice. Uh, and if he switches in normal Scizor on Earthquake, so if he hasn't Mega Evolved straight away, I think I can then kill him with a Fire Blast after that. Not Fire Blast, to Fire Fang, sorry. Um, Earthquake is just generally really good against this team. Um, and finally, we have got Superpower, which I believe is for the High Dragon. Um, and potentially the Cloister 2. Um, obviously, if I do Superpower and kill something, then he does get quite a few free switches. But we felt that was the best coverage move. The one thing this thing struggles against is the Horlucha, but I'm not worried about that because I have got a Clefable. Um, and I have got a Latias, which was the other thing I didn't mention about Latias. Latias is there for any kind of Holucha. Um, it, it, other than Sky Attack, it can't really do too much to me. So, um, that is Crook. Uh, next up, <coughs> excuse me, we've got the Megalopony. We've returned Fire Punch, Quick Attack, High Jump Kick. Um, Jolly, just enough to outspeed a Tapu Coco. Rest and Attack, Rest and HP is quite a standard set. Um, return and High Jump Kick together just destroy his team fire punch is there obviously for the scissor but scissor doesn't switch into a high jump kick either um we've seen the power this thing has it can two shot sell a stealer so um uh, this thing can wreak havoc to his team as long as he has no scarfers and as long as i can keep it healthy um we should be good to go quick attack there is priority obviously to pick off any you know weak scarfers or things which have set up like the whole lucha for example um if that gets to unburdened boost that could be quite scary if i haven't got anything defensive to check i think i just lose but um so that, that that's the reasoning behind that otherwise it's quite a straightforward set i just click return um literally i can just click return he has no resists outside of sizzle 
because of Scrappy. Obviously, Jellison would usually help, but um, that can't switch into two returns or two high jump kicks either. So, Lop literally is just click one button and occasionally fire punch if I have to. So, that's Lop this week. And then finally, we have got uh, the Clefable with the Moon Blast, Moonlight, Stealth Rock, and Flame Pro. We just went sort of standard defense, really. Um, I needed some bulk on both sides. The bulkiest thing I have in my team at the moment is the Latias, and it's not the bulkiest thing. So, um, the, the only issue I had here was I have to try and predict which berry is going to be best. Because I could run Kebby Berry, I could run Babiri Berry. Either could be incredibly useful. He's got Needle King, he's got Alolan Muck, he's got Mega Scizor, he's got High Dragon, which gets Flash Cannon and Iron Tail. Um, or Lucha might get Iron Tail as well. Uh, Rapidash might get it? I don't know. Um, so it's a real mix up as to which berry I need. And I, I don't think there's really much else I can do to predict it. So yeah, back to the moves. Moonblast, Moonlight for recovery, obviously Stealth Rocks for the Stealth Rock. I mean, he doesn't have anything weak to Stealth Rocks. I actually, no, Rapidash uh, and Cloyster. Other things he's got weak, but I don't really expect either of them. I did s suggest at one point to my front office that defensive um, Rapidash could be a thing to, to take on Volcarona, but um, th that, that would have been interesting to see. So, Stealth Rocks won't get huge damage, but the chip damage every single time, um, especially if he's U-turning or Volt Switching with Tapu Koko, will be fantastic. Um, so there's that, and then Flamethrower is there just so Mega Scizor isn't in like a free switch every single time. Uh, Clefable's in, because Clefable could be in quite a few times in this game. So that's a, I say a real quick, it's quicker than normal overview of the team. Um, I will quickly meet you over with the battle. Warning, the battle doesn't take very long at all, so I'll try and make it slow and try and explain things as best I can, because it also happened like a week ago. So I will see you in a second or so. Okay, guys, we are here with the battle. Now, um, as you can see, I should, I'll should i I'll switch the sides over when I start the, the battle, because I'm on the other side, which doesn't make sense. We can see uh, what team Randy has decided to bring here. He's got the Tapu Koko, the Horlucha, the Nido King, the Jellicent, the Alolan Muck, and the Mega Scizor. Now, um, one surprise thing I did see was the Jellicent. I really didn't expect to see Jellicent, um, mainly because I had so many things which deal with it. Um, I.e. Zerk Tree, Crocodile, Mega Lop. Um, three of the, well, I bought all of them, so I, I really thought that was a bit weird. Um, I don't really know his reasoning why. I mean, it is his best answer to Volcarona, potentially, so. Um, but, but you know, I've got ways of dealing with it. The rest, I, I really expected. The only reason I expected Horlutra is because Randy just loves that thing and brings it every week. I think he's only not brought it out of these eight weeks, including this week. Uh, he's only not bought it once. Um, and I think he lost. So that might be why he brings it, because it's like a good luck charm. Coco is Coco. You br you put it on any team and it'll do work any week. Um, you can probably bring it like against a team of six ground types and it would still win. Um, Nido King I expected. Um, I expected like, you know, all of these, the two poisons and the steel, because Clef would be a huge issue without it. But um, I, I kind of looked at this team and I was like, okay, once Nido King goes, Zerkatry kind of wins? are a little bit, um, and when I say a little bit, I mean a lot. Um, the only other issue here would be the Alolan Muck. I need to weaken that, I need to try and avoid it from popping its berry, or if it's Zolt Vest, I just need to weaken it. Um, and the Sizzle, if I can get that weakened just a little bit more, or just like whittled a little bit, um, Zerkatry will be cleaning up, especially if I pick something off with a Thunderbolt. Um, say for example, if I came in against Horlucha, which wasn't boosted, or this Jellicent, he would have a real hard time switching in, so I was incredibly happy um, with the team that he bought. Now, we're going to put it on slow. Um, I'm hoping that's slow enough and we're not going to have to go to very slow, but the game doesn't take very long um, because both of us do have things, like we said, that kind of screw each other over, and that does kind of reflect in this game, as you'll see. So let's just get straight into this match. Um, I'm going to switch the sides because I'm on the other side. And uh, we see that um, Randy does lead with the Nido King. I lead with the Crocodile because Crocodile has a very good matchup. Like, literally, can hit all of these mons super effective. I'm going to click Knock Up because I expect him to switch out here into the Horlucha. Um, or the, uh, the, 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 the Jellicent. Um, but he does decide to set up rocks and. I kill this thing with a knockoff and an earthquake. Now, I'm going to pause it here because you know from about 30 seconds ago I said, once Nido King goes, he struggles against circuitry. And he let Nido King drop. Now, either that was his game plan, or he really didn't think about how much of a threat circuitry was against his team. So, 
I was incredibly happy. I kind of like freaked. I kind of squealed in Discord. Um, I wasn't on chat, but I kind of typed. I was like, oh my god, he let it die. Zerk's in. Um, the only thing that now stops Zerk is the Alola Muck if he's like especially defensive assault vest kind of thing. So Zerk's inside. Um, all he's got to show for his Nido King's appearance is Stealth Rocks, and I do have Defog. And spoilers, I am able to Defog these away. So that the first two turns went absolutely perfectly for me. N knockoff was like a dr like no drawbacks play. Um, I could have had something to hit this whole lucha like. Stone Edge maybe, it's not super effective but it'll still do decent damage, um, he doesn't want this item knocked off, I mean, I think Knockoff might have killed from that range, um, there, again if I wanted to do it, um, which might have meant like a, a switch would be a bit more risky, so that's probably why he sacked this thing off, um, which is, is fair enough, but on this, you know, in the same time, it does stop my Scarfed Zerk tree. so, um, that happened, I freaked and squealed a bit like a little girl. Um, but he does go into Tapu Koko now, and I, I, I think I stay in here, because I'm like, okay, he U-turns. I should have calculated how much U-turn does, um, because this now puts me at half, and I won't die to another U-turn if I get Intimidate off on this thing. And Dazzling Gleam um, has a very low chance of killing me at this range of health. Um, so I decide to stay in, and I get like a free knockoff. Off on something, um, or a free earthquake. Um, earthquake is going to be my play because if I can kill this Coco, I, I I am so happy because I get the electric terrain. I can just bring in Zerkatry and click Thunderbolt and pretty much win um, this early in the game. Um, but I'm going to hit earthquake and I'm going <coughs> to excuse me. I am going to just get a, a good amount of damage off on something uh, on um, Randy's side. Of the uh, battle or side of the team, side side of the whatever, you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to resume here. I do stay in, and uh, the amount of health I am, if I can get rid of rocks, I can live a dazzling gleam. Um, I have a good chance of living a dazzling gleam anyway. So uh, he does bring in the gelatin, which is really risky. Um, an earthquake does a huge amount of damage now. Um, we don't see leftovers here, something he could be Coldberry, and Crocodile is still going to be very useful. So we're going to bring in Latias, because one, I'll take an energy, uh, a Shadow Ball if I need to, uh, and two, I can get a free Defog off. Now, he predicts that, I think, um, and I'm happy just to let Latias die, because Latias was here for the Nido King, and that's gone. Um, and I get rid of the rocks, and he can't get them back up. Um, he has nothing on his team which puts them back up, so he does get U-turn, he does kill me, that's... A shame, but oh well. Um, so I do die, and I believe he goes into his Tapu Coco here. Now, oh, uh, we we know what's going to happen. Here. I'm going to bring Crook, and I think I, you know, I've got a really good chance of winning this exchange here because he doesn't know I'm Rosalie Berry, and with the Intimidate U-turn can't kill. Um, if he wants to U-turn, that's fine. He's got to bring something in again, which um, will take an earthquake, and he doesn't have much for that. So, um, I'm quite happy just staying here and click Earthquake. Now, he does click the Dazzling Gleam button, and we're talking about this during or after the game. He hits me with Dazzling Gleam, and he kills me. Uh, the roll was 42 to 50%. I was on 49, and he gets the high roll, which means he now basically um, killed my crook, and crook was so important in this game. Because it was my best answer to killing Muck. Uh, it was my best answer to killing... Uh, it was a good answer to killing this Coco. And uh, it was a good way of killing the Jellison. Now the Muck's unscathed. Uh, I haven't got any Earthquake Mons left. I haven't got anything to the super effective. Um, that's a bit of an issue. And that roll really screwed me over. Because if I'd have killed this, that Coco again, I'd bring in Zerk on the Electric Terrain. Or the one turn of Electric ter Terrain I have left and just hit a massive Thunderbolt. Or at least a Volt Switch. Because... I can do that if he wants to switch around. Um, so that's really annoying that that happened. Um, but at this point, I've only seen him click U-turn, and I've only seen him click uh, Daz and Gleam. Now, I rather stupidly make the assumption he is Choice Scarfed, or at least Special, because if this isn't Scarfed, uh, he has nothing to outspeed my Lop, and I don't think he'd be Choice Scarfed. Lucha? He could very well be, um, but I don't think he will be. So I make the aggressive play, and I'm going to go into my, um, into my, what's it called, Volcarona. Now, um, he's at minus one attack, so I'm thinking, okay, if he wants the wild charge in this electric terrain, that's fine. I'll probably take it, because of that, that drop. Um, we're going to click resume, and here he goes for the Z, uh, 
whatever. The Z Wild Charge, I'm assuming. Or no, sorry, the Z Thunderbolt or Thunder or something like that. And it just kills me. Um, no, it is Wild Charge because we will see later on he does have Wild Charge in this thing. So I don't know if that was a roll as well. Um, I haven't done the calc, but he's at minus one attack. So unless, I mean, he has U-Turn, Dazzling Gleam, Wild Charge, uh, whether he had Thunderbolt on there. I don't know what his last move was. I would imagine it's probably Nature's Madness. Um, for something like Registeel. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of killed me. I don't know if it was the Wild Charge. And if it is, I'm going to be very upset. Because I didn't think about it at the time. But I have a minus one attack. And uh, it's probably another roll. To me, it would make sense to be another roll. But um, you, you win some, you lose some. So uh, if that was a roll, that's two rolls I lose in a row. And this Coco is still sitting here. Uh, like an absolute threat. So I'm like, right, screw it. I have to bring in Lop now. No, I have to bring in Clef. If I can get some chip on this Coco, um, Lop beats it. Um, and I know it's not Scarf now because it switched up moves. So that U-turn does nothing. Um, and I think he brings in the Muck here. Yeah, it's, it's like a safe switch at this point. Um, I go, he goes to the, oh, sorry, I go for the Moonblast. It does like nothing. So I'm pretty sure this is Assault Vest because, um, just to so little, and it's a neutral hit, and Clef isn't weak. So, we're going to go into Lop here, and luckily he doesn't get the poison, um, but I do now get to Mega Evolve, get a bit of extra bulk, bulk, I can't speak now, so I can actually live like another poison diamond, plus I'm living at 53 anyway, so. He decides to bring in his Jellicent, he's going to sack it off, which is a smart enough play, and High Jump Kick doesn't even kill it, and we find out he's Rocky Helmet here, um, and I'm just going to click Quick Attack, because I, I don't know, I think this can get Tackle Jet? Um, and just kill it off. Um, so that thing goes down, but now annoyingly I'm in a range of bullet punch. Um, in comes the Sears. I I could have switched into Zerk here, um, but he does go for the bullet punch and does kill me now. What this does allow me to do, while it's... I mean, I outspeed the rest of his team with Zerk Tree here. This Sizzle can't kill me. I don't think a U-turn and a bullet punch will kill me. Now, I give it the Thunderbolt. That does a lot of damage. So if I'd have got some chip on this Sizzle... I would have been in a really good position um, earlier on in the game to just bring this thing in and start clicking Thunderbolt. I, as you can see, I do get the paralysis, which is useful. Um, because what actually happens is he does get fully paralysed. I spoiled it. There you go. So he doesn't get any damage off on me now. Um, I don't know what he clicked. I'll probably U-turn. I'm going to click Thunderbolt again and kill this thing off. Now, here comes the Beast Boost. Now, if he brings in Coco, he gives me the Electric Terrain. He can do some good damage to me, but he's only helping me win. Muck comes in, um, basically I had to stay in, I get the paralysis again, and I'm like, oh my god, am I about to win this game because of hacks again, I beat Asta, I nearly beat Asta, sorry, not win it again, nearly win it again, because I nearly beat Asta with the freeze um, on his crest, if his Muck gets fully paralysed here, he loses, um, straight up, because if he brings in Coco, I'm at plus two, I'm modest, he gives me electric terrain, he won't be able to kill me, and I outspeed him. The Horlucha just dies unless he is, um, unless he's, what's it called? Focus Sash, that's the one. So if he gets fully paralysed here, this Muck just, he just loses. And the fact that I got two 10% in a row, that's really lucky for me, really unfortunate for Randy. So Hax literally gets to dictate whoever wins this game, this one turn. He does get the knockoff, and that is the right play, because if he'd have poison jabbed, he'd have also lost. But he knocks off my choice scarf, so now, obviously... Uh, both his ones outspeed me and will be able to kill me off, which is sad times, but we do get the beast boost We're not a plus two speed uh, two special attack. If only you could get the speed boost on Zerka tree I'd been set um, But you know Coco can come in now quick dash and gleam and kill me uh, And obviously if I was at full HP that would not have even been close to killing me So that's a shame um, and now in comes Clef. Now Clef still has a chance This is where I find out he has wild charge and I'm like oh crap um I, I can't win this. What I should have done here uh, was click Moonlight and basically let him kill himself to uh, recoil and um, yeah, to die to recoil and let the electric terrain run out. And then I could have taken on potentially the Horlucha. Um, so I could have still won at the end here if I had healed rather than just tried to kill this thing outright. If I'd have just let it hit me with three or four wild charges, I could have killed it. Um, I would have had to have tried. I mean, I would have probably, I would have literally sat there and clicked Moonlight eight times, let this thing kill itself. Um, with the 
uh, what's it called, just, just to give myself the best chance against the Horlucha. So, uh, I got the special attack drop as well, so, <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to start using special attacks, it wouldn't be doing as much damage, so, you know, uh, in, in the end, Randy did win, he gets the 2-0, and uh, I think that did help him a little bit try and get towards the playoffs, um, and I think it does eliminate a few people who were potentially able to get in. Uh, it stops them from getting in, so or, or if it doesn't stop them, it makes it really hard for them. So, unfortunately, we didn't win there. We had a good chance. Um, Hacks nearly brought it back for us, but because of Crook dying to that role, we lost. If Crook didn't die to that role, Coco would have been dead, and I would have been a very happy bunny. But that didn't quite work out as planned. Um, but it's a shame, you know. It swings and roundabouts. We get them powers, he gets them rolls. So. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I appreciate it. it's been, like, quite long, but hopefully you did enjoy this battle. Next week, uh, I, I'm up against Papa C. I'm actually about to battle him shortly after recording this video, and uh, I'll give you this now. It's going to be full of memes. We have agreed to a, a full-on meme battle. Nothing. I mean, I'm guaranteed 8 for this point. He's guaranteed 9 for this point. He can't overtake me because he hasn't won a game yet this season, um, and we're just going to meme it out, and I have got some spice for you guys. So... Um, that will hopefully be on Wi-Fi as well, um, because we want the Wi-Fi leak to be on Wi-Fi and not showdown. So I've rambled on for long enough. Thank you for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you next week for the final week of the D-League. Take care. Bye.